Hello, Trotsky here. So today is the day we have a winner of the contest. And first of all, thank you very much. I received so many great pictures you share with me with your memories, with great pictures. Uh, and it was really nice to receive about 200 pictures and it was really difficult for me to, to pick on the one I really like the most. But some, one day I've received an email from the guy from the Greenland and uh, his name is Karsten Aistrup. I hope I pronounce it good. And he's from Greenland and uh, look at the picture. As you can see, it's, it's really an outdoor picture for me from a hunting trip and the guy is, is crossing the river and it looks like the river is, is running really fast and uh, he described the picture like this. The picture is from a reindeer hunt in September 2012. It was a six day trip. So Karsten, the knife is... Uh, I will send it. Never send anything to Greenland. I hope the Polish post office will do that. So thank you for the picture. And I hope the knife will do the job in your next reindeer trips. Okay, and the second part uh, of the movie. This is the Q&A, the first Q&A on my channel. I have, a, I print the common questions that you ask me and let's start it. So, okay, the first question. Is there, Mr. Splatman is asking, is there any steel that is easy for beginners to harden? Well. Yes, I recommend the spring steel for beginners because it's easy to obtain, it's cheap and it's rather easy to heat treat, okay? You can uh, make a better heat treatment using the electricity furnace, but the spring steel, if you quench it in oil when it's dark orange, it will give about 55 Hz hardness, so it's pretty enough for, for many knives. So, try it. Okay, the next question. Uh, Sandro Kraner is asking uh, when is the right age to make really good knives because I am very young. When did you begin your knife making as a hobby? Okay, I start when I was 25. Uh, but today I am watching Facebook knife making forums and I see that 12 years old guys are doing very good jobs, so uh, the age is just a number. No one here. Would you like to buy a new machine tool for the workshop in the near future? Which is, which is it? Yes, I have one machine that I really would like to buy. This is the uh, dust extractor, because when I'm sanding uh, for a few hours the micarta or exotic wood there is, is a lot of dust in the air and uh, even wearing a mask I can feel the dust so the extractor and also my current cam camera uh, which I'm recording now is dying slowly because of the environment in the workshop so when I will have some free money I would like to buy some new camera also Jeff Anderson, do you prefer one type of knife steel above all our others, or if yes, why? From I don't know three or four years, I am doing all my knives from AT Sealer V2. It's a medium carbon uh, tool steel, a great one I think. It's used in the wooden industry to making uh, bench saws and stuff like that. So. It's very durable, it's keeping the sharpness for a long time and I think that uh, I know how to heat treat it. After many tries I know the uh, exactly what temperature of, of furnace and uh, how long tempering and in what, what temperature. Uh, I have 59 to 60 Hz on the cutting edge and also there is a good looking hammer line in this steel without using any mud and something like this. 
RZR is asking when did you start making knives and how did you get into it? Do you still have some of your first knives? It would be a quite interesting to see them. I know that one of my first knives, my dad is still using it in his garage every day. So in the next Q&A or in the next vlog I will pick up the knife from him and show it to you guys. And I started making knives 11 years ago, so I was 25. And I was... why? Well, I always was interested in knives, but never thought that I could do some of the knives my own, so... I was just a knife user, but I also uh, was into the medieval reenactment and there is always was a problem with a good knife over there, so the knives uh, were looking good, but we were due after, you know, cutting some bread, or the steel was heat treated properly, but it was, looks like, an, I don't know, some orcish item. So I decided I need to try, and, uh, you know, I make a knife for myself, for my wife, and then some friends asked me, can you do me a knife also? And I think that it starts over there. Carl Zachary is asking me where do you get these mosaic pins from because from the life of me I can't find any and they look really cool. Well, my friend is making these mosaic pins with animals and stuff for me. And uh, he's on Facebook and his profile is just mosaic pins. So. Uh, if you are interested in these pins, you can find him on Facebook and ask him if he had got any on stock at the moment. And I think that in the next vlog, maybe I, I will speak with him, I will make a giveaway of some stabilized wood and uh, the elk uh, pin for you. What do you think about that? Shelley Raskin is asking me what happened to the blog number 7. My question is what rock do you usually aim for and why? So, <laughs> yes, I saw this question and I think myself, what's wrong? And then I just figured out that I made the vlog number 6 and the last one was 8, so the 7 disappeared. Sorry. I'm an old man, you know, my memory is not so good. <laughs> And the second, my question is, what rock do you usually aim for and why? Basically, I don't like the cult of the high Rockwell scale, because, you know, the, some guys say, ooh, this knife don't have 64 Hz, so I will not use it because it's a crap. And for me, it's a bullshit, because, okay, the 64 Hz knife is, is cutting like hell, but first, you will not be able to sharp it in the field using some very basic sharpeners and the second uh, it will be brittle so it will be okay for cutting some uh, food uh, some meat but with some uh, you know branches some harder branches it, it can damage the cutting edge so that is why i am aiming for 59 hertz on the cutting edge and about 45 on the spine because all my knives are heat treated uh, with the Hamel line. It gives knife a flexibility on the spine and the cutting edge 59, you know, you can uh, sharp the 59 hertz knife from carbon steel in the field using stone. So uh, probably this is why I am aiming for 59. Knife Builder Dallas is asking me how did you add the grooves across the top of the blade? I see this on a lot of your knives, so it's called checkering file. You can buy it in the US without problem and it looks like this. Like I said, my camera is losing focus, so it's called checkering file. The box looks like this. The black and uh, blue pattern on the paper and you can find a few gradations in your local store or in the internet. So check a ring file. 
when doing these stamps on the uh, spine it really helps when the hand is wet and you are losing grip on your knife so I recommend you it's a very good idea to buy one of these so the last question is where do you sell your knives uh, so many of you ask this question that I leave it on the end and uh, you know these are my only employees in the workshop so I physically can't make as many knives that I would like to make and uh, I am making 15 year 15 knives a month doing being here for eight nine hours I don't want to hire anyone because I would like that you know the knife you have from me is made from the beginning to the end using my hands that is why I have not so many knives for, to sell every month and I, I am also receiving so many emails and uh, questions on Facebook on Instagram about uh, selling my knives that sometimes I am unable to answer all of them so if you are still interested send me an email send me a second email because like I said sometimes I would like to answer but I physically can can sorry I am here for eight eight hours a day then I have kids the homework stuff supper and, and after that I'm sitting to computer I am answering five to ten mails and I have no stamina for more so I will try to figure out something to, to provide more knives for you but it's hard so give me some time and I think this is the end of the Q&A the first Q&A uh, if you are interested in second one sure send some questions in comment section and I hope that I wasn't so boring that I think that I was so see you next time and bye.